Okay, streaming. Cyberpunk. Perfect. Just log in with Twitch. Down. It'll automatically do it. Oh no, it's not anymore. It, I think w that you know, cause my recent events bar wasn't working anymore. So. <clears throat> Hello. I love refrigerators. I love refrigerators. Thank you for that donation. I haven't seen that notification in forever. That was, uh, I don't know who that was. It was nobody. It was Doc. Oh, was it? Uh, okay, that's not the password. Shit. I don't remember. Hold on, guys. I'm trying to get the password in here so that I can see what you're saying. Uh, or, should, you know, any donations. Enter? Hey, but that's the authentication token. Start to install the latest Windows updates. No, thank you. All right. It was Gengar. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you very much, sir. Thanksgiving it's not Thanksgiving yet. It's tomorrow. Manana. Okay. You received a gift. Uh, what is this? Screen chat? Who saw this game on sale? Star Wars. Well, thank you, Blaze. Okay. Okay, yeah, close enough. Okay, we are we are here. It's me and Alex. OJ's on vacation and we were just gonna uh I'm testing out my, my camera setup. You guys may remember me and Patrick played uh Harry Potter, the card game with the this camera setup. So we was gonna try it out. Uh, with my buddy Alex here, who is into 90 CCGs. Some it's of them. Some of them are great. Uh, some of oh them yeah. are bad, but still were fun. And some of them are bad, bad. Yeah, this is one by Richard Garriott, right? Uh, who did Magic? I guess he Richard also Garfield. Richard did Garfield. Or Richard Garriott? Garriott did Ultima. Oh, Avatar, right? That, and and Shroud of Avatar. So, this is Richard. Which one is it, Garriott or Garfield? Garfield. Garfield did Magic the Gathering. Yeah, this is Richard Garfield. Okay. Okay, so um, this is Battletech. We've got two different versions for you, but before we do that, let me uh, open up my wide-angle lens here and see how much extra table space that might give us. 
And we just thought it might be fun to learn together. So I haven't opened them or I don't know what it is. And <laughs> old 90 CCGs can also be uh, not very uh, inviting or intuitive. So uh, we'll see how, how well this one is. I don't know that wide angle lens here or pop pop this off but the whole thing pops off I don't think that's what's supposed to happen the Marvel CCG yeah there was Star Trek and Star Wars. Rage. Rage was the one that we played uh, I, the I second about most, Rage. I think. Well, maybe third, because it's like we played a little Pokemon, but. Rage has this werewolf on werewolf, the front. Yeah. Um, this is bullshit. I don't think that. No. But. Yeah, it's definitely a wide angle lens that uh, gives a. T whoa, too much of a fisheye. That's is, how Zero plays Warzone. This is one of the cheap little Amazon ones. This one's only 20 bucks, 20, $20 $30, but I'm going to return it because. That is terrible. Now it does does add quite a bit of extra. <laughs> wow, is that new? Because it's already scratched up, and scuffed up around the side. Not the lens, just the side. Hmm. Yeah, if we could just get this off. Yeah. It's mm. a cover, right? Yeah, but <laughs> look. Look at that. I'm going to need a tool for that. Uh, huh. Is it a twisty? Nope. Yeah, it's not twisty. It's, it feels like it's a twisty. Yeah. I just don't want to break it. Nope. I don't touch camera shit because I break it. Play some Ragnarok, goddamn. Um, we play a lot of video games offline, you uh, fucking child imbecile. Um, so, probably, we will never stream Ragnarok again. Probably never again. And I want you to know it's because of people like you that we will never play it again on stream. We'll play it. We're going to finish it. Shit, I'm playing it at home right now, too. Doing, I'm going to 100% that shit. But, um... Yes, I, I, I would say that I am very nice. Maybe if we use a prying tool. So the question is whether this is uh, a twist off or not. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a tab here. And mm -hmm. so that tab leaves me to believe that you should just, ouch. My Finger, nails. Legend of the Five Rings, yeah. I played a little bit of that. That's so crazy that you've played the two that I was like, hmm. Well, there was the original Those one. Those are the more the, obscure ones. There was an resurgence like three years ago where like it came back with, I don't know, if a second or third or ninth edition, whatever. This is just not. That That's... That's some bullshit. Wow. No? Didn't want to pop off? It's like not popping off. So now, I guess I'll use these gloves. You think it's a twisty? I don't think it is. It'd have to be reverse threaded. To try to get some extra. Oh, you know what? Let's make it. My finger's too big. <laughs> 
I can't believe this is. Yeah, I, I actually hope that the the ranked choice voting at the Game Awards makes that Stray wins. That you know the the Ragnarok stands are like fuck it, Elden Ring gets fifth, and everyone just puts Stray at second, yeah. and then Stray wins because everyone had it you know so much higher in the ranked choice. <laughs> I doubt that's gonna happen. I know, but I you know it would be funny. <gasps> yeah, I got I got here. Give me this. Bro, what the fuck? I'm not supposed to make that noise. Oh. Wow, you're a piece of shit. It's motherfucking threaded. Yeah. So it's a little twisty. So the question is... Is it reverse threaded? I, Probably I, not. I can't tell. Thanks, Doom Throw. It's very nice of you. Subbing. It's only plastic. I'm thinking about. Mm. Ah! You son of a bitch. We got it, chat. Fucking got it. Ouch. All right. Now, I did all that because I'm assuming that this is some kind of screw piece that can screw on. Uh, and an adapter piece is what I'm hoping that is. Does it look like an adapter? No. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> oh, may maybe. Ah, uh, wait. What we do is uh, we get some tape. We just fucking tape it. Remember, chat, there if something is. moves there it is. and it's not supposed to, duct tape. If it's supposed to move and it doesn't, WD-40. Nice. Hey. 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 Okay. I got it on there, chat. Wait a minute, that doesn't look like it. Does that change anything? Now I'm gonna pull it off. I don't wanna change anything. What? Wait is. a minute. Okay, so here, it cuts off at the third finger. Here, I guess you get one thing. You, you get an extra. That's not what I was hoping. Sometimes an extra finger makes all the difference. Mm hmm That's a bullshit. For the fucking all for the fisheye effect. No bueno. Whatever. We'll try we'll use it for now. Okay. Alright, so let's see. Who do you want to be? We've got uh, go, uh, Jade. We got two clans and one inner sphere house. Ghost Bear, Clan Jade Falcon, and House Steiner. Probably Steiner. Steiner. All right, cool. I want to be one of the clans. So Ghost Bear is a... Ghost Bear is a solidary hunter from the icy arctic regions of the clan homeworld, Strana Mekti. It lurks quietly in the deep snow fields, waiting for its chance to strike with overwhelming power on its unsuspecting prey. The clan warriors who have taken this fearsome predator as their totem share many of its traits. While they take no action without deliberation, they are mighty when they decide to strike. They are never hasty, but always successful. Take command of Clan Ghost Bear Force with this potent deck. Many of your mechs are jump capable, allowing you to seize the initiative on the battlefield. Your superior mission planning will allow your forces to survive almost 
certain destruction and deliver unexpectedly deadly results when you have the upper hand. What's yours say? Read the whole thing. House Steiner. Conventional wisdom dictates that the military forces of House Steiner are slow, ill-maintained, and bereft of strong leadership. The Steiner Ooh. mech warriors are fond of reminding defeated opponents of this reputation. Mm. Far from inept, the soldiers of this house are dedicated and resourceful. While clever tactics and fancy maneuvers may be popular with other houses and clans, House Steiner forces uh, know that a big mech that can take a lot of pounding and keep delivering uh, a withering fire on targets gets the job done just mm. as effectively. Uh, take this deck to the battlefield and serve up some serious hurt in your enemy. Maybe faster, better equipped, and able to run circles around your mech, but the battle won't be mm. won with clever tricks. In the end, it all comes down to simple, raw firepower. Oh, that one sounds great. Yeah. I want his. Okay, That's how Jade. I played Mech Warrior 2 anyway. It's just yeah. like all the lasers all the time. Clan Jade Falcon, after suffering humiliating defeats, not the one. After suffering humiliating defeats on Tyra Cross and Tukayid, Clan Jade Falcon seeks to redeem its honor at all costs. The time for underestimating opponents is past. The Jade Falcon now bring their biggest, heaviest mechs to the battlefield. Equipped with the most devastating weapons, the clan uses these powerful mechs with ruthless efficiency. Oh, that sounds better. The Jade Fal Falcon force bristles with firepower. Challenge your enemy to combat with ancient but chal ritual. Tell your opponent exactly what you intend to do and deploy limitless resources and monstrous engines of destruction. You'll send those massive mechs against the opposing forces and crush them. Every battle is a vindication. Every victory one step closer to redemption. All right, Jade Falcon. Caca, caca. Yeah. I guess that's them. So everyone has, on the back of this, you have a clan special ability. So what is yours? Uh, scrap a card from your hand to gain R. Use this ability only during your deploy phase. Mine is, uh, if I had better eyes, I could read it on the main screen, but I can't. Scrap a card from your hand to repair up to three damage to each of your units. Use this ability only during repair and reload. What was yours again? I get to discard a, a card from my hand to gain R. R. Maybe reload. Maybe reinforcement. Can't open my box. These are supposed to be the little straps that you have, but my strap seems to be broken since this is 22 years old. There you go. Commander's Edition, which is different from the first edition. So I actually have a f I bought a first edition, um, and this one was cheaper. But I looked at why, why there's two different editions, and mainly the cards look a lot cooler and cleaner in the second edition, so that's why. And then the second edition comes with a deck theme, so we can just play right out of the box. The first edition kind of has randomly inserted cards. But, I mean, ran, not, ran into a certain degree that you'll still be able to play. Okay, so you open this from the side. Huh? It comes with one dice. It comes with metal tokens. Wow. But they're such awkward tokens. They're almost maybe they're supposed to look like a currency from the day, uh, from the lore. I don't know. But Shitty they're metal little washers. metal washers. Yeah, they're it's just so crazy. I've never seen anything like that. And this was Wizards of the Coast. They were trying to make Battletech their sequel to the extremely popular Magic the Gathering. Quick reference guide. So second edition gives you, um, tries to ease you into the rules even more so than the normal rule book here, which is nice and big. Comes with a stupid mail it back to them card. Hate those things. Uh, but Battletech is such a cool and rich universe. 
I like that they start with that. So where am I over here on this map and where is he? Well, I gotta look at it first. So he's House Steiner, which Alex is this huge blue area, right? And Jade Falcon comes in from the top. So these are all the different clans. So I'm actually right next to him, oh, ready to kick his ass. Bag of nuts, yeah. The game comes with a bag of nuts because the game is going to drive you nuts. Amazing. Hopefully I have some cool mechs. Oops, I damaged the card already with my screwdriver. Uh, do I have any cool mechs? Uh, I have a adder. I have a house something gosh i wish i had better vision than this. Um, i can also show them to you like this the penetrator puma prime oh i got a vulture mad dog rock i That's like cool. the vulture mad dogs i'm clan so i hope i have zeus what's my favorite mech alex which one mad cat which one do you, you like you knew i you knew it that's the one from Mech Warrior 2. Yep, that's why. Uh, and a Mad Cat is a clan mech. Hey, I don't have a Mad Cat, but it is in this picture for support assembly. Somebody's assembling a Mad Cat. Uh, I got a Thor. That's a, another famous mech. No, these are random. These are. These are like the pre-made decks that they try to balance. Yeah, but it looks like I don't have <laughs> Naga. I got a Naga Prime. And I got a Loki. Loki and Thor. Man of War Prime. Jenner. I've heard of that before. Eh, okay, so none of the mechs that I really recognize except for uh, the Thor and the uh, Loki. Why oh, and the Jenner. All right, so let's learn the game here with this quick reference guide. It says, let's learn it together. Oh, you're just going to dive in the rules. Okay, ignore me. See if you can tune me out. I know it's hard. Remember, when you win your opponent's... Oh, you win... When your opponent's stockpile runs out of cards. Okay. Well, I need to know what a stockpile is. Turn sequence. Go through these phases in this order during each of your turns. If there's more than one thing you do during a phase, you can do them in any order. Uh, so it goes tap, untap, draw, deploy, repair, missions, end of turn. This is not a very good quick start guide. You are going to have to go through the rules. For example, do I shuffle everything? So there's the universe. There's a table of contents. There's a foreword from the designer. There is a story of the Battletech universe. There's an overview of the universe. And here are the... Uh, stats on each card and what that means. Here we go. So the play area, which is what we have here, is divided into four <laughs> regions. Your stockpile contains your face down draw pile, which is also called your stockpile. Okay, so this is like the wrestling card game where once you run out of a deck, you die. Your construction region is where you store unit and command cards while playing them. Your command post is where your command cards go. Your patrol region is where your mechs and other units, once you've paid and activate them, forego. In addition, you have your hand and you have a scrap heap. Okay, starting a game. Battletech is a game for two or more players. Yay! If this is good, we could see if uh, you know Joe and Ray will have their own mechs. You need way. Davion. Ray will only play House Davion. Does he already? He already knows what he likes. Oh, it, Ray is way deep. He's fucking elbow deep in the battle tech. Oh, I can't believe I'm playing this while Ray's not here. 
Oh, well, I love knowing that. Uh, House Davion is this little symbol right near my thumb. And that's House Davion right there, the yellow. Well, that's Ray's forces. He's got the biggest area. All right, starting a game. Each player needs 60 cards. Shuffle their decks. Cut their opponent's decks. Draw five cards. All right, well, let's just do it. So you're going to have to give a really good shuffle because all the mechs are together. Shuffling unsleeved cards is heresy. Unfortunately, I got... Don't worry. I got a really good deal on these, so they're cheap as hell. And though, to be perfectly honest, these starter decks are expensive. Uh, are but you can... Black core or blue core? You can get single... Uh, you can get bundles of cards. Well, since it's the sequel to Magic, I'm I'm pretty insane from the same company that made Magic and from the same designer that made Magic. I'm pretty sure it's going to be whatever Magic used. So one of the things that makes Magic kind of special is they were one of the only company that w Wizards would use different paper for them too. I guess when we're done, we can if there's like a rules card, we can tear one up in half. And Yeah, I, uh, I didn't know that. I don't like how the logo is Battletech up here and Battletech down here because I'm trying to keep all the cards one side, <laughs> uh, one side face up. And you can tell whether you're doing that or not at a glance. So I've, to I've told this before, but you want to know the worst thing I ever did as a kid? The worst thing? It's not, but you it's You don't have to say that on stream. So there was a tournament for... It was a dual land tournament. Now, dual lands weren't worth the, what the, they're worth now. They were probably worth 20 bucks each. What and the winner of this tournament... Uh, in Magic, they're the, the real expensive lands. Some of them are like 600 bucks each now. Uh, but there was a dual land tournament, and I was a shitty kid, but I was very good. I was one of the best people in the store, but I also knew how to piss off my opponents, and mm -hmm. they would do stupid shit. So they'd hand me the deck to cut, and I would take their deck... And I'd turn one half upside down, and then I would <laughs> shuffle their deck half up, half right side up, and half upside down. Ugh. And <laughs> it, they just shitty, shitty person. I won the tournament. <laughs> See, I'm uh, anal. I was just saying, I want all my cards to be the same. So he would have pissed me off too. Look, I'm not that way anymore. But I was, I was really competitive back in the day, and then and then I stopped. Now we, we we play for fun. Savage, yeah. That kid, everyone was like old and shit, and it's just like. Mm -mm. The other thing is when you can predict what cards are people drew based on their facial expressions. They do not like that. <laughs> Dude, how many cards were in Magic? How the fuck did you do that? Well, it's like poker, right? So it doesn't. You don't know the exact card, but you know that's a card they didn't want, or that's a card they did want. Yeah. Well, people play in a certain way. You know, they try to play towards their outs, and then they like they get a dejected look, and it's like, "Oh, did you do another land?" And they're <laughs> all okay. Yeah, gamesmanship's really important. Um, Drop five. If you, I didn't cut your deck, cheater. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut. Shuffle deck. Cut their deck. Just fucking do that. <laughs> uh, if, you if let's say you had a combat trick One, in Magic the Gathering, two, and you wanted your opponent to not think you had a three, combat trick in Magic four, the Gathering, five. what you would do is they would go to attack with their creatures, and you'd pick up your pencil like you're going to cross out your life total, mm -hmm. and then they're like, all right, cool, damage. And you're like, fuck you. And they didn't think you had anything because you picked up your pencil. Feigning. Oh, man. There's all sorts of cool stuff that you could do. And then there were people who, like, legit cheated. Um, yes. Uh, I used those people. I used you to never did that, right? No. Or you would admit to it. No, yeah. I was never a cheater. Pencil fucking. I played Magic with uh, a legit magician. I don't think he cheated because he was terrible. But he could, like, shuffle your deck, and he would draw four lightning bolts, in it, which is a red card, and you're all white deck, and you're like, I have no idea how you fucking did that. Like, you're... <laughs> Do not play magic with a magician. 
you will lose. Now you got washers when you need to do quick repairs. I do. That's so weird. I don't even smell like an auto shop. This is shit that would never come with the game in 2022. They'd never put all this extra because this is extra cost these days. They're well, and pre-release packs come with a D20 now. They don't come with really? tokens anymore, but yeah. Okay, well, that's magic. That's special. Magic <laughs> is special. Okay. So once you draw five cards... No, it's not a card game unless you're constantly like. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, those are on sleeve. For example. Oh wait. I mean, are you really card gaming if you're not doing this the whole fucking time? No, stop it. If you're just learning to play the game, you can use this pre-constructed deck out of the box. Sequence of play. Don't tell me a story. I hate it when they do the story thing. Okay, that was just a story. So they do the story first, and then they tell you exactly what to do. To play a game of Battletech, players take turns drawing cards from their stockpiles. That's a stockpile. Deploying cards into their hands. Constructing and activating cards they've deployed. In the 90s, very important. All these, these terminologies are important. Sending mechs and other units on missions to attack their opponent's units or sites. Briefly, here are the six phases. Untap, draw, deploy, repair, missions, and turn. Let's go over the sequence in greater detail. So, we are now in the untap phase. I have nothing to untap. Y units and command. Okay, then we're just going to skip it. Draw phase. Draw two cards from your stockpile. If it's your first turn and you're the first player to draw, only draw one card. Okay, I'll do it. I'll go first, and I'll just draw one. Uh, you draw two card. You draw the two cards at one time. This is occasionally useful to know, since you might have a card in play that has an ability you can use during your draw phase, which might be useful to use between the draws. So you draw the two cards one at a time in case you've got some cool abilities. Got some bullshit, Richard Garfield. Yeah. Deploy phase. During your deploy phase, you deploy units and command cards, making them available for construction. Construct cards that are under construction, gradually paying for them, and activate cards that have been fully paid for and constructed. You can also assign pilots between mechs during this phase. You can mix and match the things that you do during this phase in any way you choose. For example, during your deploy phase, you could deploy a card, construct it, construct another card, activate it, Deploy a second card, activate the first, then construct the second. Stop trying to confuse me. Deploying cards. To deploy a card in your hand, you put it face down in your construction region. Once you've deployed a card, it is under construction and can be activated as soon as you've finished paying for it. You can reveal a card under construction to your opponent at any time, which turns it face up. Though usually there's no reason to reveal a card before activating it. Some cards require that you show a card to other players. While this lets them see the card, the action doesn't count as revealing the card. The usual way of a deploying a card is to use a deployment. You get two deployments each turn, okay? Two deployments each turn during your deploy phase. So you can usually... So usually you can only deploy cards that phase. It, if it's your first turn and you're the first player to draw, you only get one deployment. Okay. So let me look at my hand real quick and see if there's anything I can deploy. I'm sure you're going to probably want to deploy support shit first. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm seeing logistics. Uh, at the end of your turn, you may restock one card from your hand. A lot of these things have costs in the upper right-hand corner. So let's look at a card together. In fact, let's look at two cards together. Mm 
base. So this top thing is the base construction cost. So this costs zero to construct. So that's good. So I'll probably be wanting to do uh, some zeros. All right, so if you look at this card here, it's Strip Mining Operations. Look at this cool art, man. This is why I was hoping to play the game. Look at that Duquesne. Look at the art. I love it. So Strip Mining, it says, you may deploy this card revealed to make an additional deployment this turn. So I'm going to let you know that I have a, uh, a Strip Mine. So that I can, and I'll play that face up. Doesn't mean that it's constructed. It means that it's under construction right here. Strip mine. And then uh, I can make an additional deployment, which I will do. Two deployments? Yeah, because of my strip mine. So there's no limit on the number of things you can deploy during each individual deployment. Right? No, there is. It's two. During my the first player in the first turn, he only has one. Mm -hmm. If it's your first turn and you're the first player to draw, you only get one deployment. So that's why I'm using this strip mine so I can sneak in two. Once during your repair reload phase, you may pay R to repair one damage. I want to do that one face down. Okay. So I think that I've got that right. Uh, but let's move on to constructing cards. In order to activate a unit or command card, you have to put a number of construction counters on it that it at least... Oh, that's what these are, construction counters. Yes, yeah, so you have to pay 2L to make a strip mine? Let's see what the 2L means. Two L is just that gives me two logistics. It's the costs. Where? It says right here that these are the cost asset costs. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to pay two logistics to Okay, let's let me continue reading the uh, constructing cards. So um, you have to put a number of construction counters on it that at least equals its construction cost. A card's construction costs appear in its upper left hand corner. So at the very least I need to put one, but that's just the base con that's just the base construction cost. Then he's also saying there's a logistics cost. A card's construction cost appears in the upper left hand corner. Construction cost always includes a base construction cost and might include one or more asset costs. A card's total construction cost is equal to its base plus each asset, specifying an asset that isn't available to you. If a card's total construction for you is zero, you can activate it without putting any construction counters on it. For example, the Sunder's construction cost is 6 plus 3, A plus 3, M plus 3, T, the best. Mm, bleh. Okay. Where do we get assets from, Alex? Uh, oh, it's this is an assembly asset. Mm -hmm. And so that this makes... This is a logistics asset. So, yeah. So this, I would need two logistic assets? Yeah. Logistics, logistics. Got it. But all I'm doing is I'm deploying it. I'm not constructing it. And I'm deploying it face up. So what I would want to do is deploy one of these logistics... face down so these aren't these are in construction they're not activated yet mm -hmm. so I don't actually have to pay the cost until I'm ready to activate it so um, um, if you don't have any of these assets available its total cost for you is 15 so you'll need to put a total of 15 counters on it before you activate it 
If you have just some of them available, the cost will be somewhere between 9 and 15 I don't get that. Although resources are usually spent on construction counters, you can also spend them on other things. Cards. During your deploy phase, you can tap cards for resources to put construction counters on your cards under construction. Do you get it? Yeah. Go ahead and tell me. Uh, you can use generic um, construction okay. counters instead of the A and the, the L and the T and the M's and all, and all these other ones. Then what's the, what's the point in having that there? So you can either pay, you're telling me I can either pay three or I can tap logistics two or i can tap two logistics and pay, pay one. one i think yeah well where do these construct how many of these construction counters are we getting i have no idea okay is that during a phase that you get it mm. i'm unsure perhaps we should watch a video Construction counters. During your deploy phase, you can use resources to put construction counters on cards. So you have to use resources. So I guess... Resources. Command cards that provide resources, which are used to put on construction cards and pay all other kinds of costs. Resources are represented by the symbol R. Most abilities that provide resources provide only one at a time, but some provide more. Resource cards tend to make one or more assets available. So we need to figure out basically the difference between assets and resources. And to do that, you have, here's a resource card. It says support logistics, and it has an L down here. And it has a resource. So I know that this is a resource card, and I know it's an L, but I don't understand the distinction between the assets and the, re and the resources. Like, do you... It would make sense to me if, like, a card would give you two resources if you're using it for logistics, if it's a logistics card. But once we get past that, well, we can move on. Let me go back. Oh, let me read the uh, area on assets. An asset represents a necessity for raging war, such as a factory, ammunition, strategy, supply, or political influence. There are five assets in Battletech that are typically provided by a resource card displaying one or more of the following symbols. A, L, M, T, P. At any given time, you'll typically have one or more assets available. The usual way to make an asset available to you is to have a command card active that provides the asset. But some cards keep making assets available to you after they leave play. Many costs include one or more asset costs, which appears a number followed by one of the asset symbols. Uh, for example, 3A is an asset cost of 3 that specifies assembly. If you have a given asset available, you ignore all asset cards specifying that asset. Okay. So if I have an asset available, I ignore all asset costs specifying that asset. Okay, so if you had a card that provided logistics, you just ignore that and pay one. Is that what it, that's what that says? Yeah. All of them, it seems. Yeah. Yep. Would you like to watch a video, or you you think we're good? Oh, you, if you can find a quick video, that's fine. I think we're... Okay. I think we're good, though, but I'd like, I just want to check real quick. I saw one earlier. And it is uh, hmm. in my history.
Wizards of the Coast made fucking hilarious how to play videos in the early 90s. There's some crazy magic ones. Alright, this is all broken and not what I was looking for. Can you have support of the League Asunder? Force you to pull your on my back row. So if you could do that. Okay, just resources. Members are right, they would return home and conquer the inner sphere. These uh, resources, but they have different art on them, even if they're the same unit. Okay? Oh. It's like you might have munitions or assembly, they have different art, the exact same effect. So exact same flavor text, exact same everything. Support assembly, support munition munition, I yeah. get it. So I'm just gonna lay out one of each, and we're gonna talk about what they do. Yeah. Now you see the little tap symbol on these, right? So if and people we can actually like call it tap. Support assembly or support politics. They have a little tap symbol, and they say they have that little R symbol as well. So that means that you can tap it and generate land resources. Okay. Mm, okay. So it's a little tap symbol, a little R. It says tap. It says uh, they're lands. So the first one is politics. Yep, politics does nothing. No, that's the, if you could do that. that's the wrong okay. thing. Just resources. Then you have support assemblies. Those give you money, but also, as long as you have something in your command area that says assembly on it, even if you have seven support assemblies, this ability only works once. It's a yes or no question, on switch or off switch. If you have an assembly in play. If you have assembly during your repair reload phase, you can spend a resource to repair one point of advantage. <laughs> okay, so I can tap to give me a resource, and then during the assembly phase, I can repair something. Yeah. And I, if I just have one of those out. Yeah, as long as you have one of those out. If yeah. I have the five resource out. can come from anywhere. It doesn't have to come from the support directly. Just yeah. know that like, you have factories, so now you can repair your factories. So, but if I had five of them out, I could generate five resources, but I could only heal one. Correct. All right. You nailed it. Then we have logistics. Similarly, so all By of these the way, are... I'm already starting to understand how this works, <laughs> and it's great. <laughs> it's actually surprisingly great. All of these are... are uh, going to function the same way, right? Yeah. They all give you a resource. So logistics say you can restock a card at the end of your turn. That means you put one from your hand on the bottom of your deck. Okay. So it's a way to kind of heal your stockpile, right? You can kind of keep building it up hmm. as you go along. Munitions means that normally whenever you fire missiles, this is classic 90s, by the way. I roll, let's say I have two missiles. Mm -hmm. I'm going to roll two dice. On a one or a two, the missile succeeds. And a one means it does one damage. A two means it does two damage. Three, four, five, or six means nothing happens. So missiles actually want the one and the two. But if I have munitions out, a three works. And deals three damage. And deals three damage. Oof. So All your right. missiles become awesome with munitions. And then tactics, finally, you have plus one to your initiative, so that's going to allow you to do better in combat if you have a tactic support or something that gives you tactics in your command area. Okay. Okay, so that's how all, all of those function. And do we have the equal number of those in our deck? I don't know, but this stack looks about the same. Okay. Yeah. So those are our support. So I'm just going to leave these here. This is kind of my, I'm going to start framing just kind of a command line to give you an idea of how that looks. We also have other command cards. Like I'm going to look at a card called, I'm going to try to find one without much um, without much text so we can just make that happen. Uh, let's look at the Salvage Strike Crew here. So this is a card that's also, it says command on it here. Now so I've, the rest of, I think besides the resources you're saying, everything else is rank. Oh yeah. So, yeah. so the, the command. Uh, you're going to have all sorts of different stuff. I don't know what you have. Awesome. I have no okay, idea. this is great. But it says command, so it's going to go in my command row. You notice my resources all say command on there. So this is kind of this, this command row that's happening. Um, then it says uh, two up here in this top top left number. Okay. You see that in the, the little thing? Yep. Yeah. So this is how we start getting into how we pay costs. So that okay. costs me two resources. Okay, Tell me. Like so the circle with a number in it. You see that little symbol, the L? Mm -hmm. So it means I need to have a logistic support to play this card without a penalty. Otherwise, if I don't have logistics, I pay an additional two. Ah, so there we go. Okay. <coughs> Going back to, uh, we'll take a little step at a time because we can understand the rest of this because we play CCGs. Uh, oh, no. Which, uh, which camera is that?
camera went down. iPad cam? Okay, iPad cam, I get it. All right. Oh, that's my that's my hand there. Oh, because we're not doing that. We're doing the zoom. No, we're doing the overhead cam. Okay, so I get it now. All right, so uh, I'm doing my deployment turn, right? And the deployment, mm. you're just putting cards face down, okay? And you can, if it's the first player on the first turn, he can only do one. But I can cheat, and I can say uh, I I do this face up so that I could get a second deployment for free. Mm -hmm. And then there's my two deployments that I would normally be able to do. Um, now, how does this go? Do we do I go and you go? What is the uh, play order? I, I think I do everything, right? And mm -hmm. then you do everything. So let me finish going through my phase here. Where's the quick reference guy to show me the rest of the phases? So untap. Did it. Draw. Did I draw two cards? You drew one yeah, card. I drew one on the first turn. Then deploy. You get two deployments each turn except for the first turn and the first player. Construct sh cards. All right, now we construct the cards. So I'm going to, in order to construct the cards, you uh, reveal the cards. In order to activate, uh, you have to put a number of construction counters on it equal to its resource cards. So I'm going to reveal this one here. It's got a zero construction cost. So now it is constructed. Correct? I think that's correct. Uh, during your D, uh, so that's the construct, that's the activate phase. Yeah, because during your def deploy phase, you can tap cards for resources to put construction counters on your cards under construction. That's what construction is. Now, activating cards. During your deploy phase, you can activate any of your cards under construction that have enough construction counters on them. This is a zero cost, so I'm activating this card. Doing this makes the cards available for use or active. When you activate a card, also reveal it. If a card has too many construction counters, you can still activate it, but you ignore the extra counters unless the card says otherwise. A card's cost isn't verified until you want to activate it, which can be important if you gain access to a new asset while the card is under construction. When you activate a command card, you move it to your command post immediately. This is a command card, so I'm moving it to my command post. However, if you activate a unit, you leave it in your construction region until the end of the turn. But command goes in there immediately. That's why I moved it immediately. This greatly limits the number of things a unit can do in a turn it was activated. So there's summoning sickness in a way with mechs. Then you can reassign pilots. We have no pilots. Then I move to the last phase, which is the uh, repair. Oh, it's not the last phase. It's the fourth phase. Repair and reload. During your repair and reload phase, you can repair and reload cards. No. Moving on. Missions phase. No. Moving on, because I don't have any mechs or units to send on missions. Okay. 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 Playing mission cards. No. End of turn. In the end of turn, you do the following. If you have activated any mechs or other units in your construction region, then move them now to your patrol region. That's going to be a third region over here. Remember, we have three regions. Construction, command, patrol, and I forgot, or four regions. I forgot what the fourth region is. Uh, if you have the logistics asset available, I do, you may restock. That is, put the bottom of your stockpile, uh, that is, put at the bottom of your stockpile a card from your hand. Why would I want to put a card this from your my life, hand? life total. This is my life. Yeah. So if you're just trying to bolster your life total, if you've got a card that is just fucking useless and you, you know, mm. then you just put it in the bottom of your deck for a hit point. Okay. And then finally, tell your opponent you've ended your turn. There is no limit to the number of cards you can have in your hand, so you do not need to discard any. I have ended my turn, Alex. Okay, I'm going to draw two.
Okay, I am going to deploy uh, an assembly and deploy a politic. Here, let's do a, uh, we're going to do this for benefit of chat. So you're going to, uh, well, you're, depl you're deploying first. Those usually go face down. We're just doing the operations. And then they, uh, are you done? Those are your two deployments. And then you do, uh, and now you move on to the next phase because you can only have two deployments. Um, I do get two deployment phases, yes. But you can mix and match the things you do during this phase in any way you choose. You can deploy a card, construct it, construct another card, activate it, deploy second card, activate the first, and then construct the second. So I can do is... Mm -hmm. Deploying a card... Um, you get two deployments each turn. Mm -hmm. During your deploy phase, so you can only deploy cards during that phase. So you got two deploys. Boom. He did two deploys. Yeah, but I can't construct anything now? No, yeah, I think you can. Because you, it's just the limit is two deploys. These are two deploys. But now you could do the rest of the things, which is constructing, right? Uh, which is activating, right? Yeah, it's activating a card. So you're activating a card. When you activate a card, you reveal it. It has a zero cost, so he's fine. It is a command, right? Then it moves to your command. He's uh, revealing this. Cost zero. It's a command. It moves to his command. Okay, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll just... I'll do it this way then. Okay. So he's not he's not revealing this. This is something else. Alex has an assembly. Yep. All right. Uh, then you move into your what phase? You're not doing anything else because you can't repair, you can't go on missions, and you can't restock. Well, you could restock. Do you want to restock? No, but I'm gonna. Oh, no, he can't restock. I'm gonna have tap restock. this to put a counter on that. Before my turn is over. Wait, you can do that? Yeah, that's how you develop assets, right? But that I thought happens at the beginning. Um, at the beginning of the turn. Mm. All right, let's figure out when it happened. Okay, so the deploy phase is broken down into deploy, construct, activate, reassign. That's just not intuitive and a little complex. Um, a, to a card's total construction cost is equal to its base plus each asset. If a card's total construction for you is zero, you can activate it without putting a construction counter on it. Yeah. Yeah. During your deploy phase, which it currently is your deploy phase, you can tap cards for resources, which you just did, to put construction counters on your cards under construction, distributed any way you choose. So yeah, we're just it's like a comboing. Okay. Cool. Now now then in this case, then when on my turn what I would have done was I would have done that. Then I would have activated this card. Then I would have tapped it to construct this. Then this construction is completed because I have a logistics. And so then this is now constructed. And we, I think, remove those counters. So that would have been the way my turn looked like. Then you did that. And now we go back to me. Okay. I think we got it. So, uh, untap. Untap all of your tapped cards. Draw. You must draw two cards. In the game, it says you can do them one at a time in case you want to do something in between. And now deploy, construct, activate, and reassign pilots. 
So the, I'm in my deploy phase. I can deploy up to two cards. Oh, this is cool. So it's like I can make a mech hanger. And a mech hanger gives you may make an additional deployment this turn. Uh, so it's like you're, you know, the hanger is giving you that. Um, so that's what I'll do. So my two deployments are putting that face down and then putting, putting, um, was all this art? The it, the art doesn't matter. That's what they said before. Okay, so this is how it works. So I did my two deployments, Alex. Right, two deployments, mm -hmm. and now I'd like to activate cards. Um, so activate cards here. This is a zero cost support assembly. Command card goes into the command uh, post, and then this is a mech hanger. Or actually, I don't need to reveal it to you. But what I do is I tap two to get two resources, and I put two on there. And then now I say I'm activating this card. It has a two resource if I have a logistics. I do have a logistics. And so this is now constructed. There you go. Mm -hmm. I like it. But boy, is this play face going to get big here in a minute uh that is the end of my turn mm. put him up dr evil oh dr evil are you around um, you remember how you were talking about uh, the RPG of Babylon 5? It just so happens that I found an auction on eBay for 60 bucks tw plus $20 shipping for six books uh, of Babylon 5 RPG. And I just love Babylon 5 so much. Just as reading material, I bought them. And so, like, they're, they're like Centauri, Prime. The, the, they even show... Um, you know, like the layout of stuff. Yeah, let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna show you real quick. Okay, so I played this as my my one of my deploys. Immediately mm -hmm. constructed it. Played it. This is one of my other deploys. Mm -hmm. uh, immediately put a, a resource on it using it. Yeah. This put a, a resource on this because it costs two plus mm -hmm. the assembly. So now I have a Centurion mm -hmm. mech out ready to party. Yeah, and then uh, well, so technically this was still here, and then when you went to your end phase, this came out into your patrol. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, I'd buy that for a dollar. This uh, says two, right? Did you pay two? I did. I paid one last turn. It was the first thing I did. Oh, because then... the card was faced down with a counter yeah. on it. Okay, I'll be right back. I don't know how I feel about this, chat. I don't know how I feel about this. Stop cheating? Never. I refuse. Okay, check this out, Dr. Eel. I buy way too many RPG sets just for lore and background. Well, then, you're a man after my heart, because look at this. Boom. So, this is the D20 system. So, this is the Earth Alliance fact book. It's just a fact book. Look, it shows you the different planets, Psy Corps, reporters, merchants, traders, raiders. Look at that. Damage severity, selling stolen goods. This is the kind of shit you'd be into. I mean, I'm clearly into it. I don't know what the Zolico is. 
Maybe it's a section on the ship, Babylon 5. The League of Non-Aligned Worlds fact book. So all the little minor races of the, of the world. Uh, whoever has uh, blue sash is blue leader. Uh, whoever holds the red sash is red leader. Earth campaign book. This is really cool. What I love is, you know, actual galaxies. So if you are super into it, you can do a Babylon 5, a call to arms campaign and just take over, you know, the actual map of the universe. But I just wanted to show you this, the Centauri Republic fact book. Look at how crazy this is. So you have the Centauri uh, culture, ambassadors, no, uh, noblemen, what their different ships and battleships. Um, but what I found in here fascinating is they actually show where the cities are on the planet, <laughs> all the different to topography on the different planets that they own. This is just an incredible amount of detail. And then they actually show a fucking city layout <laughs> of one of the Centauri cities. Uh, that is definitely some hardcore game master uh, material that you can make some really cool campaigns. I never knew anybody that was into Babylon 5 when I was watching Babylon 5, but what an amazing time some people must have had that I never got to participate in. All right. Anyways. Where we go? <coughs> Um, all right, so you just ended your turn with one mech out there. You're going to need to probably be reading on how to go on missions and shoot me. So draw two cards. Oops. Hey, finally pulled a mech. Okay, I will deploy this card face down. I will deploy. This card uh, face down. It's just weird. And the, the deploy phase of the game is weird. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I did my two deployments. I am going to activate this card. It's a zero-cost munition. Oh, I needed to untap. Uh, zero-cost munitions. Mm -hmm. And so that'll just come up here in the munitions. I'll try to organize this to where the four different categories are up here. And then I'll just start stacking the, the four categories. And then these are two themed buildings. I have a strip mining operation and I have a mech hangar. So these are just uh, view them as buildings that this guy's mech can go and raid or kill me. I don't know how he attacks my stockpile. That's how he wins. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so let me let me get your deck right here so we can keep it symmetrical. Okay, uh, so I did that, and then w let's do a construction, right? So you tell me if I'm doing this right. I can, y you tap, right? Apparently. So w I'm going to tap everything, right, for five. You may deploy this car revealed. No, that doesn't help. You may make an additional deployment this turn. It says tap to make an additional deployment this ability is only during your deploy phase. So I could have tapped to do an additional deploy. Let, let me do that, because that, that gets me uh, quicker here. So there would have been three deployments here, right? Or no, there was, okay, let me, <laughs> let me start over. Uh, so I could do three deployments if I tap this. Yeah. Thing. But I, I lose, 
oh, that doesn't give me two resources. No, nothing. That's yeah. how much it is. It just gives one resource. Get no resources. Because it's only a command. Because it has to say tap, add resource for it to add a resource. All your other ones say tap, add a resource. Oh, so this one, yeah. This one is a resource because yeah. it's a strip mine. So I really only have four resources. Yeah. And then this allows me to do a an additional deployment, which would give me three deployments. So I'll put three deployments. Okay. Uh, my That was my mech assembly. So now I have four little tokens to distribute. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to put all four on this okay. wonderful building <laughs> definitely a building <laughs> yeah yeah i'm done I th oh wait no uh, then these come out and then i'm done So if I attack a mech that's being worked on, what happens? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or how does... Do you have to have a mission card or you just go on them? All right, so let's read that now. Uh, missions phase. During your missions phase, you can send your mechs and other units on missions to attack opposing units and sites. I imagine these are sites. Um, there is no real limit to the number of missions you can have in a single turn or the number of units that can go on a mission. However, going on a mission requires a unit to tap. Alex has one. He's got a cool-ass Centurion C-something NTD. Okay. So Alex wants to send his Centurion on a mission. This works much like the deploy phase, and then you can intermingle actions as you like. For example, a mission space might consist of guarding a site, sending minions mechs on a mission, using a card ability, using another card ability, sending untapped mechs on another mission, and then guarding a site. So if Alex wants to, do you have any sites? I guess you don't have sites, but let's say, I, I think this is a site. You can have him guard, you can have him guard, you can have him guard, or you can go out on a mission. Sending units on a mission. During the missions phase, you send a group of one or more mechs to on a mission to scout out enemy territory and attack and destroy resources, personnel, and other war material. Valid targets of a mission include any opposing site, which is the stockpile, cards under construction, or cards in an opponent's command post. So here's all your targets. Mm -hmm. What do you want? Well, let's keep going. Um, remember that enhancement and pilots are not sites. Mm -hmm. Any opposing unit provided that each attacking unit is faster than the target unit. Uh, so let's say I had a guard on one of my construction sites. We check to see if his mech is faster than my mech because uh, you could do that. Any opposing depleted unit or command card. Units of any speed can attack depleted units of any speed. For example, slow units can attack any depleted unit, even though they aren't fast enough to attack it when they weren't depleted. Uh, so you can attack opposing units, you can attack depleted units, and you can attack all the different sites. We got it. Once a mission has been resolved, you can send units on another mission, provided you have untapped units to send. Since sending a unit on a mission requires tapping it, a unit can typically attack just once each turn, but a unit that untaps through a card effect can go on another mission. So he's going to tap this to go on a mission. Blocking. So now the opponent can block with any of my units. Unfortunately, I have no unit to block with. So we move on to battle. The rules sometimes refer to effects on battles. Check the card effects. A battle consists of four steps. Determine who wins initiative. Once a player goes first at this time, whoever lost initiative enacts his or her part of the battle, such as abilities, playing mission cards, and assigning damage. The other player goes second. The player who won initiative has, has complete knowledge of the actions of the other player who lost initiative. Resolve damage. All damage dealt by units, mission cards is so delayed. Damage is assessed same time. Okay. So, but the base attack value of a Centurion is two. Mm -hmm. So he's going to do two damage wherever he wants. Where do you want to go? 
Uh, your stockpile, because damage to construction constructed things isn't very good. Okay, so uh, this thing, so then base structure value and base armor value. So you want to probably destroy one of the things you could get to. How does the armor and destruction work? All damage is resolved simultaneously at the end of the battle. For each unit that received damage, check to see whether any damage to that unit or site was prevented through the use of mission cards or other effects. No. Uh, so, yeah, you're saying it, it's not worth it. it, it for every two points of damage that got through on a construction, mm -hmm. you remove one construction counter. Yeah. Okay, what about these values? Have you figured that out yet? What does the armor do? Uh, is that the absorbed damage? Let me look. Uh, base armor is the left number and structure values. Um. Mm-hmm. Melissa, hey, there's my girl, attacks a single mech that has lost initiative. Brian blocks with two mechs. After playing mission cards, Melissa gets her mech attack value up to seven, and she assigns all of its damage to one of Brian's mechs. When it's Brian's turn to battle, he plays Heavy Fog and a mission card that gives each attacking mech negative two. Melissa immediately has to take two back from wherever her damage was assigned. Since all of its damage was dealt in one mech, it takes just two damage assigned to that mech. We need to figure out how that works. I need to go to the bathroom. So, one is an armor value and one is the structure. Yep. So, if you're hitting me with a two, then isn't this four armor completely absorbing it all? Yeah, but I'm not hitting those. You're hitting what? Your stockpile. Oh, I didn't hear you. Boom. So, I think you just discard cards, right? Mm -hmm. <gasps> you discarded my Black Hawk. My black what? What did you call me? But you so you destroyed a hangar and a black hawk. And then I can right? I can alpha strike. I can do two more. Mm -hmm. But then to it's... To overheat your mech? Yeah. Yeah. Look that up while I go to the bathroom. I'll be back. Yeah. So I deplete it, which I tap it, and then turn it face down. When does it turn back face up? You must untap, except depleted units. So it makes them sit out for a full turn. I see. Um, that's fine. We'll do that. So we'll get that and that. Four, four damage all the way through. Mm. What are you guys up to today? I'm um, watching us play old ass games. What are these things? That's a, six, that's a seven. Very wet and windy Essex. Neural Cloud. God of War just beat the game. Nice. How old is this game? This game is old. 96, 97. Cooking some goodies. Yeah, I've got to do a bunch of cooking tonight. Cleaning the kitchen? Yeah, this whole week's going to be non non-stop kitchen cleaning. It's my turkey plan this year. Uh, it's going to be amazing. Amazing. Uh, I'm doing uh, smoked turkey breast. Full breast, so it's, it's both of them. 
So it's the crown. I'm doing a smoked turkey crown with a dark meat. I'm going to do sausage and turkey gumbo, which will serve as the gravy and a, a actually probably the main dish because most people like that over. I'm going to do Cajun sausage and cornbread stuffing. There's going to be rolls and beans and pies. Games you've been playing? Uh, Dark Tide. Um, did you guys feel that, that Kratos is, is super fucking underpowered? And especially in like the first 30 hours of God of War. Because he hits like a little bitch. And it makes me so sad that just like random enemies deal so much damage. And then you hit someone with two chained weapons made in the pits of hell by the God of War himself. And then you hit someone with it and it's just like, man, 1% damage. It's like, man, fuck you. Yeah, Dark Tide's been pretty fun. I'm curious to see like what stuff gets added in the full launch, if anything gets added, or if this is just like... If you upgrade everything as strong as hell... Yeah, 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 I, I get it, but I, that's not what I asked. You completely ignored all the fucking question in order to say something that has no, con no, no meaning whatsoever to any of us. Not none of us. We know. The issue is, uh, this is the God of War, it's a sequel. He's already strong. He already has beefy fucking axe. He's... He's just like, I've had a long relationship with Kratos, killing all sorts of gods all over in all sorts of realms, and then I get into this one, and just like random fucking zombies just like kick my fucking ass. It's like, wait a minute. I'm the God of War, goddamn, and I hit harder than that. Plasma gun? No. No plasma guns. I've used the almost all of the staffs, auto guns, and everything. The staffs are lame. They're really bad. They need to do something about them. Okay, what happened? Uh, I alpha did an alpha strike. So what I did is I exhausted him. So next mm -hmm. turn I will flip over, but mm -hmm. he does not untap. Okay. And then the following turn he will untap. So I didn't do two damage to you, I did four damage to you. Oh, what else did I And that, those are the other two, yeah. Okay. And then what happens is, this guy's alpha strike is unique. It doesn't automatically do double damage, this one just says plus two attack. So I did four instead of two. So mm. he's flipped. Uh, the other thing I did is I tapped all three resources to put three more doodads on this one that I already had one on. Mm. And uh, it ended my turn. Okay, my turn begins. Uh, untap happens first. Let me try to organize these cards. We have logistics, supply, munitions. So an assembly. I have two assemblies, two logistics, one munitions, and then two buildings over here. A mech hangar and a strip mining operation. I, I think I understand the game now, and I think I like it. But let's play some more to see. All right, I drew these brown border cards, which are something that's new. These are missions. So that'll help me when I go on the missions. But I have two deployments, technically three, if I tap my mech hanger. I will only do two deployments. And I want to get this. Uh, I guess, are you allowed to look at your card if you fucking forget? Yeah. Okay, so I only need four more counters on this, so I will tap uh, these uh, four mm -hmm. and that will give me eight counters and then I'll get rid of these eight counters to bring out my first mech 
and it is a Kraken Bane. Uh, and he is a five. He is a unit, mech, and clan. He also has long range, whatever that does. Long range three. If Kraken is blocked, it may deal up to three of its damage to the target. Anyway, this Jade Falcon second line mech is unique for its overwhelming array of auto cannons. Well, why don't I have Alpha Strike then? Does your card actually have Alpha Strike? It says strike? Alpha Strike on it, yeah. You son of a bitch. Okay, apparently I don't get Alpha Strike on this guy. Okay, so then this guy, he's constructed. He doesn't come out immediately, meaning I can't go missions on right away with him. He has Summoning Sickness. And then uh, this is a zero-cost munitions, so it comes out. And then I can tap these three for three counters on this. And then it's the end of my turn, and then my guy comes out into my patrol. Let's do the discard pile up here so that we can do the next thing. So, uh, this guy's on Alpha Strike, but he is an M, which means it's medium speed. Medium speed Centurion, and let's see this guy. He is a S speed. Slow. S is slow. So, your guy cannot so attack my guy. I actually cannot attack uh, unless you're depleted, and you're depleted right now. So, he's vulnerable. Let's the power down. Yeah. Right, now I'm going to play this one. It's another assembly. Mm -hmm. What the fuck does this say? And I'm already doing it. <laughs> Tap three, go up to seven. Play a stalker. Uh, and that's it. All right. So, uh, untap. It's annoying. But two cards. And we've got politics. Let's do two deployments. And then let's I do... I put a thing on there. It's okay. Just didn't tap it. Uh, <laughs> yes, bad memory. A and M. I do have A and M. So all I need to do is tap two. Uh, I will tap two to deploy this mech. Or to finish constructing that mech. My mech that has finished construction is the Wyvern. Wyvern. He is a mech clan. He's got an overheat ability, and he's got jump. All right. Let's see. I've got five resources left. Let's go ahead and build the Puma Prime. Puma Prime. Five resources. I don't even know where the Puma is. Oh, there he is. Got a big back. Puma Prime. We're tapping all of these. Good lord. And then 
I also have uh, politics. It's a support, zero cost support. What does politics do? Uh, if you tap it, you get an R. Alex, do you know what that means? It's just, yeah, tap the is the R. resource. That's the washer. Yeah, but if it already says command and resource, then why does it need to tell me That's tap? how they, they, they did it at the time in Magic as well. Oh, so all of these say that? Yeah, oh, all of them all say of tap them R. Say it. Okay. Okay, so it's now it's my time for a mission. So I'm going to send out my uh, Kraken Bane. I can attack his deck, his uh, um, alpha whatever, uh, his overheated mm, or depleted Centurion. Um, I guess I can attack a unit only if I'm fast enough. He's slow and I'm slow, so that would work. Or I can do any of the things in his command post or any of the things that are being constructed. So what is mine? Mine is a five damage. Uh, would I be able to kill this? It only has an armor of one, but a uh, hole of six. So it would not kill it, but it would bring it down to one hole. What about this? Well, uh, it has three armor and seven hole. So that would only put two damage on it. Now, if I were to say I want him to attack the deck so I can discard five cards to catch up with Alex, he could say I am going to guard, right? Yeah, block. Or block. Okay. And then how does the blocking work? You want to read blocking? Could you also, another question, can you block your, um, block for your unit? Uh, your opponent can decide to block your attacking group with his or her units running the group from reaching your intended target. Your opponent either blocks your entire attacking group or doesn't block at all. Which units can block? Units on patrol, units guarding the target you're attacking, or a combination of the two. Blocking with the unit requires your opponent tap that unit, just as like when you're attacking. Mm -hmm. Um... A patrolling unit can only block if it's at least as fast as the slowest member of the attacking group. Okay, slow is, versus slow. Uh, if an attack is blocked, a battle occurred in the attacking group and the blocking group. Usually the target is left out of the battle. Uh, if an attack which unit... Yeah, so we, just, we would be fighting each other. Mm -hmm. And it would... It would essentially, none of it would get through to your deck. It would yeah. just be between these two. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I don't think you can actually block with a unit like that. Can Oh, no. I it's can. just an, it's just a generic incoming attack. Yeah. And then you decide. Okay. So I am attacking you. Are you blocking? Um, Are I'm these two mechs going to fight each other? Uh, I think. Think, sure, let's make them fight. Cool. That seems fine. Okay. So when that happens, we have to determine initiative, yes? Yes. Yeah, we both. You have initiative. Do you have a T out? Do you have tactics? Tactics? A T? No. All I right, don't think so I then have we both have initiative zero. Okay. Because. Yeah. Tactics? No. I have a cool one called politics. Oh, wait. But hold on. Uh, before that, because I get to add cards, right? No, I have you can't do that. You can't do that until you, we've determined tactics. Because okay. you can't, you can't even use any mission cards unless you have tactics. Really? Yeah. Our our d our default initiative is zero, which means we can play no missions cards until we develop okay. tactics. I was just reading that earlier. Okay. Well, then it's just raw power versus raw power. Or no, first we need initiative. If we both have zero, what happens? What does this do? Oh, I'm going to take a shit. Determine so initiative. You and the defending player determine who goes first, who goes second. The player who ends up ends this step with a higher oh, initiative no, score yeah. wins. Yeah, I'm not going to block because this, this doesn't block. work the way that I thought it does. Okay, five, I'm going to try to catch up to you. Five damage to your thing. Let's okay. see if I get anything juicy. Oh, I got something juicy. No, that's a shitty mech. Shitty mech. Uh, and then what is that? Faint. Uh, you got to land. 
Oh, that's a good mech. You got a Banshee, mm -hmm. uh, a Treachery card, Treachery. and munitions. Here are all the ones that I killed. I got the Banshee's a Grasshopper. That's a cool looking one. I like Grasshopper. And then a Fane. And then this, whatever that is. Did I put too many down? I think I put too many down. And then Banshee. Yeah, you think you did? I did put six. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so. let's put that one back on. I'm about to drown anyway. All right. Uh, cool. Well, then that's the end of my turn. I will bring this mech, uh, these two mechs out from their construction. This mech was tapped because it went on the mission. Cool. That's it? Yeah. Alex has his centurion, ba centurion back from his alpha strike. Hmm. Oh, that's what that does. So that one's not that bad. I thought because this one's got missile. So in addition to doing mm -hmm. two, it also shoots a missile. Mm. Did you guys yeah, have missiles? Yeah, you rolled a dice. No, I don't. Uh, I did no, not you're, have you're, No, the one you attacked I have with. long range. Oh, okay. He has long range. I don't know. Okay. What the fuck is this? Yep. That's what that is. So we'll put these two down. Mm -hmm. They're lands. So let's start organizing these. Excuse me. Now do I want to go on a mission? So, it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a mission can include guarding a site. So I wonder if you have to send the mech on a mission before you guard a site. Or if it just happens unnaturally from blocking. Why ever send a, a, a unit to guard if you can automatically block? I will have to look that up. Okay, and then I'm going to pay for this. And I think I'm going to pass. Okay. While I take my turn, can you look about guarding? Because I don't understand what the point of guarding you is. You can't block if you're not uh, block a thing if you're not guarding. But what's the? So you have to go on a guard first. You would have to you specifically guard something you're working on if, like, you were worried about me blowing it up. Well, what about our deck or our stockpile? I think you can only guard uh, things in your command, either in construction or in the command line. All right, leave a look that up because uh, I don't know what. Just double check that. All right, untap is the beginning of my turn. So I've got two munitions, two assembly, two logistics. And now I got politics. I'm a politician. 
Uh, draw two cards. A think tank. I will deploy two uh, deployments. And then this requires five to build. So I'll tap five. Uh, that I'll tap these four. And politics to construct a man of war. He's a gargoyle. Uh, but he doesn't come out yet. Uh, this also untapped. So I have three mechs available to me to go on missions. Let's... Okay, so deployment phase over. Now mission phase? No, it's a... Yes. Repair and reload. Well, we have no damage, so now we go on missions. A group of one or more units. Okay. This is slow. This is slow. And this is medium. So... You have, uh, do you have any mediums? Okay. And another medium there. Mm -hmm. uh, these are all active. Alex has got three mechs. I've got three mechs. Mm. And so what you're telling me is you can't block because you didn't set any of your mechs to guard last time? I couldn't block if you attacked this. Mm. But it says any site. This is a site, this is a site, and this is a site. That's considered a site. Mm -hmm. Let's let's look in the glossary here. Because if it's considered a site, then yes, that's the case. Site, a single location within a region, such as a card under construction, a single card in the command post, or your stockpile. Yeah, that's it then. The guarding unit can block attacks only against the site it's guarding. Okay, so we made a boo-boo. Did you want to guard with anything? Um. Sure, they will all guard my stockpile. Mm -hmm. Okay. You don't have any construction counters on this for no. some reason. Hmm. Um. Well, let's do some fun shit, right? So I'm gonna take this medium one to try to destroy this thing. Well, what what happens if you don't have any construction? I don't counts? think anything, because mm. it only says two damage per or two damage for one token off. Okay. I don't I don't like the um, uh, attacking cons things under. Yeah, I think that's something that's like included, but it's only that it's like not a tactic they want you to employ. Yeah, I guess it's not fair because if you never get to if you never get to build things, then you're gonna be if it's, you have a fast you're start, you're gonna fall behind, and you'll never be able to catch yeah, up. Yeah, if you have a fast start and your opponent doesn't, then you just literally can't win. Okay. You never, you'll never catch back up if they can just blow up all your construction. Okay. Um. Yeah. So let's just uh, let's do a straight up uh, mech battle then, right? Because I'm gonna group all three of mine, and I'm gonna come after your uh, stockpile. And you said you guarded your stockpile with all of yours. Mm -hmm. So now let's do a big battle. I would never block. All my mechs are shitty. All my mechs are two power. Yours are five four four. Mm -hmm. These mechs are these mechs are due to garbage. Oh, they don't do good damage. No, and they have very low life. But didn't you say you were gonna block? You don't want to block? Well, I'm guarding, but I, I can choose not to block. Oh, okay. Well, that's five. Four, four, right? That's what you're coming in with? Yeah, I'm coming in with uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and that's if I don't overheat. I could overheat for another five. So I could uh, go up to 18 damage total. Mm -hmm. Are you not blocking? Is, is that what you're doing? Oh, I will declare... That that do I have to declare the overheating now? Yeah, when you attack. Um, how, can you? How does the overheat work? You take the second number. The your damage increases by the what, what it says. Overheat but you three so plus you, three attack. So you're gonna take three damage. 
I will take damage. Yeah. Oh. No, there's no reason for me to overheat. So we'll just go with our base damage, which is 9, 10, 11, 12. So 12. No, 13. 13 okay. damage. Okay. Hmm. I can do... My guys do not have good armor. Only have one armor on each of these. That guy's got four armor. This guy's got four armor. He's a badass. Uh, okay, I'll take, what'd you say, 12? 12. No, it's uh, 13. Nine plus four? Okay. And I guess these are house symbols from who, who maybe made these mechs or something? Uh, you got Poopy Mac, Caesar, uh, a Zeus, which uh, sounds really cool, but he's... Whoa, he's Zeus's are good, aren't they? No, he, he ter he's terrible. Well, he looks cool. He does. And he's saying, you're saying it's terrible because it's only a three? It's a, it's a slow, four-costed three, yeah. Yeah, you're right, and it can only overheat for plus two. So yeah. it can go to five, but... Yeah, they're... Steiner. All right. Dead. I'm Anything else? Up on a house. Uh, that symbol here. I was wondering what that symbol is. It's a clan mech. And this one is a jade, jade clan specific. So it's probably exclusive to the clan jade. I wonder if the mad cats are exclusive to clan wolf. Yeah. Anyways, uh, what? Is yeah, that that, uh, yeah, that's it. So I have to tap all these, right? Yep. You tap to attack. So does that mean they're unavailable to defend? They cannot be, yes. And then if you had a medium mech, a slow mech can now attack a medium mech because it's technically depleted. Cool. Okay. Uh, I'm going to draw two. Oh, and this guy, well, this guy's finished constructing, so I do have one defense, one guy at medium speed who can go on the defense. It is the Man of War Prime Gargoyle. He's pretty solid. Because he's got medium, four, three, seven. No special abilities, though. Okay, so I just I played a special land, Coventry Metalworks. Um, if you want to show that one. It's it's a normal land, but it also has, I can reroll one of my missile attacks. Ah, cool. So. Munitions. Your missile... Your missile die rolls do three damage on a roll of three. Yeah. So normally your missiles only hit on a one or two. That's what they were saying in the video. Yeah, all, all if you have M's, like your your M's do that as well. So that's the that's the effect of the basic M land. Okay. But this is like a super M land. Um What did you do with that guy on patrol? Is he just hanging out in your patrol? Oh, he was finished uh, building, so he I, I, he's, he's on just, no mission. He's I just guess. on he's just on patrol. Okay. Is that what it's called? I think yeah, patrol is the top the top one. Okay, well, um, these two are going to attack. Oh, this was supposed to be out last turn. It was a zero sure. cost think tank. Sure. Think tank. Okay. Uh, so four automatic damage, but I get three missiles. Four automatic damage where? To your stockpile. Okay. And you and I cannot block with you this cannot. guy because he was not assigned to guard. Yeah. Okay. So I lost uh, munitions. I lost uh, Puma. I lost tactics. And I lost... Uh, a mission heroic sacrifice. Cool. And 
And then I guess whatever damage from the missiles. Yeah. So I'm going to re-roll this one. Uh, just two damage. Okay. Why do, why do you get a re-roll? Uh, it's, it's the land, the special land I told you that I just played. It, it gives you a re-roll? Yeah. It says re-roll one of your missile die rolls. Night Gur, you destroyed. And he's patrolling at night. And he looks cool. So you got a good one. And then you also got... Oh, another Black Hawk. So I've taken my Black Hawks. Alex. Black Hawks are, are really tough. Mm -hmm. Or no, they do a lot of damage. They're not tough because he only has one armor. Yeah. One, one hit or quitters. One hit or quitters. All right. My turn. Untap. I'm going. Uh oh! All hell's about to rain loot, rain down on you. Look at that! Four mechs. You only got one mech. So, um, I think we can j at this point just kind of put shit out, right? So it's like I have a zero cost munition, so it's just going to go out directly. Yeah, I mean, as long as, you short, you, as long as you short, you as long as you shortcut it. As long as I show you. Yeah, yeah. And then I have a Naga Prime. Hey, I get to use my Naga Prime. It is an eight cost, so I need to tap eight cards. Five, six, seven, eight, and he will be built at the end. But now we go on missions. So I need to, I think I can use mission cards even if my value is not zero because these have been in my hand forever. Wasn't able to find anything in here about that. It says. I think that in that step, there's something that says initiative cards. Uh, it, like during the determining initiative step, there's something in there. And I think that's what you were referring to. But otherwise, once we actually get to the missions, you the, can use the number the mission. of mission cards you play is limited to your current initiative score. For, uh, yeah, where is it? I didn't see it. Thirty-two. Thirty-two. It's the last bullet point on thirty-two. So if your How initiative score is, how do you play initiative cards? There are mechs that give you initiatives. Uh, there are lands that give you initiative. There's apparently a bunch of stuff that give you initiative. Ha have you seen any? There doesn't seem to be anything in my deck so far. Maybe I missed it. I'm gonna go and look. Ah. Tactics. That's the one that you destroyed from my deck. Uh-huh. 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 And then, because uh -huh, in the example, uh -huh. it said that there are lands that do it, there are mechs that do it. Ah, you destroyed my other tactics. <laughs> yeah. So you can do this thematic thing where Alex has been destroying my, my, my bases and my tactics, and I've been unable to really uh, enhance my missions because of that. Unless one of these is a tactics. Nope. Yeah, just be checking on your mechs because the, the book says that a lot of mechs have plus one initiative on them and stuff. Uh -uh. None of mine do. No initiative. Wait a minute. Jump jet. Negative one attack plus one initiative. Plus so you have one initiative. But it but that's only, I guess, if I choose to do the jump because it goes down an attack. Uh, I have no idea. That's... Yeah, so this guy can... can, can go on mission this guy can uh, use mission cards because he'll have plus one initiative you is our base an initiative a, not zero one it's zero it's zero yeah okay well let's see what these mission cards do Yeah, your base initiative is one if you have the tactics asset available and zero otherwise, which is the dumbest fucking way to write it. Mm -hmm. So your base your your base initiative is zero unless you have a tactics card, but they just wrote it in the mm -hmm. the worst way possible. But now you have one initiative, you get minus one attack specifically on that guy, and he's in the mission. Right. He has if yeah. I if I bring a group like that, then that that group will have a one initiative. Yep. Yeah, because the jump one set. initiative at slow speed because it has to use the slowest mech. The slowest one at the yeah. So you that that group could not attack a fast mech, but yeah. Okay. Um. Okay, so I will send my man of war to guard my stockpile, mm -hmm. while also sending my group out with one initiative mm -hmm. to attack your stockpile. Got it. 
Okay. And I will. Um, I will not overheat because I do not want to uh, do any damage to myself. And I will jump if I need to specify that to get my one initiative. And then I will play a mission card. How do I do mission cards? Uh, there, w there was a sequence. Face up. Playing mission cards. Mission cards represent last-minute strategies pulled off in the heat of battle. Typically, increase your unit's attack or prevent damage to your units. You play mission cards that affect initiative during the initiative subphase of the battle. Uh, and also when you assign damage. So, the, I'm not doing the uh, initiative phase, so I'm not going to play it. And then, you play mission cards that affect initiative during initiative and also when you assign damage. Damage from your mission cards happen at the same time as all your other effects. So I'm going to play this on the damage portion of my mission, which I don't think I have to do you until don't do, I you actually don't do, you, do yeah, the Yeah, you don't do it yet. And then pull the damage. Uh, is Trample in this game? How does, how does like, if I block with this guy and I just say he just stands in front of all the things and fucking explodes, mm -hmm. does the rest of the damage go through or... Uh, let's look under blocking, uh, which is on page 24. Your opponent can decide to block your attacking group with his or her units, preventing a group from reaching their intended target. Your opponent either blocks your entire attacking group or doesn't block at all. Blocking with a unit requires your opponent to tap the unit just as with attacking. Patrolling unit can uh, block only if it's at least as fast as the slowest member of the attacking. A guarding unit can block any attack against a site it's guarding regardless of speed mm -hmm. but it cannot block an attack against any other site okay cool so now we know what guarding really is patrols can guard but they can only guard at their speed level if you want to get a speed bonus like say you have nothing but slow mechs you're going to have to sign them to guard specific sites. So that now we understand that. If an attack is blocked, a battle occurs. Mm -hmm. I do not see any kind of uh, trample. Now, there, I do have something called long range. Long range, range will do the damage for sure. Which will yeah. do the damage. So I think that's the... That's the trample. Long range. If a puma is blocked, it may deal up to three of its damage to its intended target. Mm -hmm. So I have two long range ones that will be dealing a total of six damage to my target. Okay. Uh, so this guy is going to block. He's going to, uh, I guess, alpha strike your dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, on his way out to deal four damage, and we'll have the four damage go to the middle one. Okay. Uh, he will die. I'm going to take six trample damage. Let's see. Land. Well, so you did four damage, right? Four check, total check minus me on one. on this minus one, right? Okay. Um. Well, I didn't want any of these cards. Ew. I'm starting to think the back of my, my box was absolutely correct. On what? What did your box say? Conventional wisdom dictates that the military forces of House Steiner are slow, ill-maintained, and bereft of strong leadership. <laughs> uh, I'm starting to think that conventional wisdom <laughs> is absolutely correct. Uh. My seven-cost dude has two power, and he's just like, wait, wait, wait what? <laughs> So. No, come on, Alex. What else does that seven cost dude have besides two power? That that's it. No way. He can he can oh, punish he's himself. Got missile. He, so he he's got missile two. Uh huh. And overheat three. Yeah. Overheat would hurt him. Yeah, overheat hurts. <laughs> and missiles are are pretty bad. Well, you unless you have munitions, then you have a fifty fifty chance, right? I I hit with a missile. Yeah, to deal on average very little. Yeah. very very little damage. 
Yeah, Steiner, uh, I don't know how Steiner won any of the uh, wars in Battletech, uh, but maybe. We'll see. Maybe we'll there's see. more There's more stuff down there. We'll, we'll have to see. All Are right. you done? Uh, it's your turn. Okay. You had a damage card? You, that's up. your damage card. Oh, so uh, when I did more damage, this is play only during a battle. Yep. Choose one of your units, roll a die. On a one through five, return this card to your hand after the mission. On a six, that unit gets a plus six attack. Well, you want to save that because it can't do. It can do literally nothing but lose that card for you. Why? Because you can't. You, you're killing my guy regardless. A guaranteed 100. Oh right, because uh, we're only doing it to the dude. And yeah. Because you blocked. Yeah. So you want to save that. This does not apply to long range. No, because it only all bonus cards apply specifically to its damage value, not its its ability value. Okay, well, I want to roll anyway to see if I would have got a six, and I would have got a six. So you would have gone back. <laughs> you would have gone back. So you we'll just say that you double killed my dude. He double did. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my turn? Um, you were attacking yeah, me. Yeah, I was attacking. This is the best card? No. Is this the best card? Also, no. So, check this out. He was guarding. Um, when did they come off a of guard? Does it the happen of, automatically, or is of, he always on guard? I think he's on guard until the beginning of your next turn. Okay. Yeah, so that, that guy's guarding? Yeah. Okay. Steiner has some of the best memes, that's for sure. C. Duquesne, do you, is that a real thing? They're, 50, they're filthy rich. There's a meme that Steiner scout lances are composed of assault lances. Is that is that supposed to be funny? Yes. <laughs> Our scout lances are actually assault lances. It, it, excuse me. Uh, Ray brought over his Mech Warrior Two CDs. Mm -hmm. They're on my desk, and we're gonna try. All I have to do is figure out the DOS box situation, have it run on OBS, and then we're gonna run through Mech, Mech Warrior, Warrior two. two. Is that's the one? Prime meat. That's the one. We gotta get AJ to watch some text talks. Battle Tech. What is text talks? Is that lore videos? God wills it. He's coming out. Some of the best lore videos on YouTube. Nice. Steiner. Steiner sound German to me. Are they German forces? There must be war. I must count it. God wills it. Um, okay. So I just, I've got, I could go in. We're going to start dying. We're going to just start exploding. Mm -hmm. um, yes, please. That guy's got four armor and 11 health. That's absurd. Who am I playing? Jade, Jade Falcon Strong. Yeah. Strong like bear. It's that one. Like that one, I can't. Four armor and 11 health is just so good. Maybe you should have played these guys. Ghost bear. Ghost bear? Yeah. Oh. Um. Or your deck is misfiring. Remember, I have my uh, oh, Naga sure. Prime. Oh, that that one just came out. Yeah, it okay. finished building at the end of the phase. Yeah, I feel like my deck is strong, and I'm running on full cylinders. I feel like I can beat a lot of uh, decks. House Jade Falcon. I might become a Jade Falcon fan. I didn't like. They said we lost a bunch of battles, and we need to gain our honor back. I'm going to attack. Let's start attacking some mechs, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to attack. I'm going to. Oh, I can't attack your mechs directly, right? Well, yeah. That's. Th I thought that that's one of your targets. You can target mechs. Like, well, I mean one at a time, right? I can only make have one target with a with a mission. 
Yeah. Let's double check. Uh, sending units on missions. So, uh, you can, any opposing site, stockpiles, construction, command posts, any opposing unit, provided that each attacking unit is faster than the target unit. Yep, it's only one. Yeah, yeah. One, uh, your group versus uh, you, one. You do one mission a turn. Okay. That makes sense. No. You could go on as many missions as you want. So, as long as you have, uh, you know... Uh, untapped mechs to go on another mission. Once a mission has been resolved, you can send units on another mission, provided you have untapped units to send. Since sending a unit on a mission requires tapping it, a unit can typically attack just once each turn. But a unit that untaps through a different card effect can go on another on mission. On multiple missions. That's cool. Those are the good guy clans. Am I a good guy clan? Clan Wolf and Ghost Bear all the way. Are Jade Falcon bad guys? Uh, I am going to attack your Naga Prime, I guess. What'd you call me? Naga Prime is a two. Uh, what do I do? Okay, so uh, there's nothing I can do because I'm a medium. Yep. Are you, is your slowest a medium? Um, no, my slowest is a slow, so they couldn't attack him. No. He's going to outrun you. Um, Canadian Dust, thank you for subscribing and supporting the show. All right, well, then my medium will attack. My stalker is going to attack this exhausted guy. Okay, this guy is on patrol. Is your stalker uh, a slow? Yes. Uh, so the medium can get there in time to defend against that guy. So I'm defending. So I'm blocking you with the Naga Prime. Okay. So let's resolve that battle. Uh, you have initiative zero. I have initiative zero, yes? Mm-hmm. Okay. So we deal the damage. Uh, I deal six damage. How much damage do you deal? Uh, my automatic is two, uh, but I have missile and overheat. Um, I also have overheat. When do we make that decision? Probably now. And does it go in turn order? Probably. Overheat. Using unit options. When it is your turn to battle, you decide which of your unit options, if any, you're going to use. You can't use a given unit's options more than once. Okay. All right. All right. So I guess this, let's see what the order is. Da -da. The player who lost initiative does everything he or she is going to do in the battle first. Then the player who won goes second. Okay, so it's... But if we're, our initiative is tied, then what... what then I think it goes to the attacker. Okay, let's see. Oh, no. Tie goes to the attacking player. Ah, really? Yeah. What page? Uh, 26. Okay. It's the middle one. It's just it's analyst. So, so. Uh, you win, meaning I lost initiative, meaning yeah. I need to choose all yeah. of my options first. Yeah. I will not overheat. You will not overheat. Not overheat. Okay. And you've got seven total life. Yes. Two armor and five structure with my Naga Prime. And it does, that one does. Six damage. Six damage. Okay. Uh, I will overheat. Oh, no. It's not a prime. It looks pretty cool. I love the art. It's like fall in the background. There's yeah. even two fighters flying overhead in the background. So I'm going to roll for missile damage. Missiles. With, uh, so it does three damage. Oh, no. And it kills you. No way. Yeah. You got lucky. I needed one. As long as I got one damage, it was going to do it. Why? Because my overheat's plus four attack on this guy. Oh, so you took four damage? Uh, I took three. Why? Because my overheat's three. 
Ah, it ju- you just take damage equal to the number. Yeah. That is. Okay, so what? I, so your guy did six damage to me minus three. So he did three damage to me on his own. Mm-hmm. I did three damage to myself. Mm-hmm. So I have one life on this guy. One life. Because I have seven. I have seven total life. And who did that? That was your big boy, your stalker. Yeah. Who looks like a um, armless. Uh, 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 it kind of looks like a mad cat without mad cat, yeah. armless mad cat, armless and missileless mad cat. Uh, yep. So everyone else, these guys will be on the stockpile. These guys are just on patrol. And that's okay. it. All right, untapping everything, drawing two cards. Um, Jade Falcon High Command. All right, I will make two deployments, which is a seven total cost. Uh, the Jade Falcon, though, we determined uh, goes into your command post immediately. So if I spend two, the Jade Falcon Command can go into the command post. Um, and then contribute to whatever I'm trying to do, which in this case is just five. The What does the Jade Cal- uh, Falcon Command uh, post do? Double well, resources. it just double resources. You see it says the tap, and then it does. So this is two, three, four, five. I used the Jade Falcon Command, my politics. I told my people I needed another mech, and they said you did. And then I had a think tank to uh, do research to how we talk to people, to talk them into a mech. And then we used our strip mining operations to get all the metal we needed for the mech. That is very thematic. And what did we build? We built a hellhound. Conjurer. I wonder what the name is. Is this like uh, an actual uh, legendary character from the lore or something? It's a hellhound conjurer. Or is that just like the USS Texas or the USS Missouri or something like that? Or it's a name for the mech. He's not that great. He does have four damage. Uh, he's got to overheat. And he has a jump, though. That that helps me with the missions. Jump jits. Low uh, jump but jits. this guy does not come into play until the end of my turn. He was just built. Instead, we have all of these. And this is the first time we can actually go into the repair reload phase, which happens before my missions phase. So let's see, how do I repair this um, guy? Assembly. Once during your repair reload phase, you may pay one resource to repair one damage to your units. And you can only do that once per turn. So can I spend three resources? That's the thing he said on the, the video. You can only ever do it once. No and matter how many times it says A on the things, because it's on your A land, hmm. it's the only time it can be done. Once during your repair, you may pay to repair. Okay. Yeah. So we'll get that. There's no good guys in Battletech? How dare you? How dare you? Base model is Conjurer. Version is Hellhound, I think. And yeah, what did y'all say? Is Jade Falcon good guys? I guess there's no good. I mean, every it's like Game of Thrones. They're houses. Like, yeah, some you got some jerks on the team. You got some good guys on the team. House Davian is the closest thing to a good guy. Yeah, that's probably why Ray House likes Davian them. House Davian is Boo. closest to the good guy. And then this guy says, "Are you gonna say Davian are the good guys?" <laughs> Hello, mittens. Um, all right, we got to blow Alex up. So let's do. Don't do it. Uh, yes, mittens. Hello. Let's do another uh, guarding. And then let's do the uh, combined uh, 13 damage. We have initiative of one. Yeah, we have initiative mid-turn. Mid-turn time. Initiative of one. Attacking? Attacking. All right. uh, I will be blocking with Falcon Hawk. And that's that's it. I'll be blocking with Falcon Hawk. Uh, that's uh, okay. So uh, I'm gonna take your long range damage. 
So, yeah, long range damage of six. Yep. And uh, do you, uh, you want initiative? Do you, do you want to play any cards? Yeah. Or do you want to do any overheating or anything like that? Uh, well, you have no armor. Correct. Damn, Steiner fucking sucks. What is this? He's just a cheap. He's a cheapy. Falcon Hawk. Yeah, he's a skinny one, and he's got zero armor, six. So I only need to do six, and I am definitely doing six. But that's actually, long range is actually redirecting some of the damage. It's not like in addition. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, here's 13 damage, of which I can choose six of it to hit the intended target. So it's not like I'm getting um, oh, okay. 19 damage. Okay. I don't have 19 it's, damage. So it doesn't work like missiles do. Okay. Right. So uh, 13 minus 6. I, I would really only, I would be able to destroy yeah, he's, him he's still dying anyway. and do six damage to your deck. Yeah. Oh, no. Here come the mitten. Uh, all right. So your dudes tap. I'm going to tap my dudes. No, stay there, mitten. Stay right there. Then I'm going to play Adam Steiner. He's one of my pilots. Whoa, first time we've seen a pilot. Let me see him. Adam Steiner can untap a mech, and then they can attack again. So maybe this is a main character. Pilot. This hellhound comes out into patrol. Okay. Gotta make a splash this turn. That is a cutie samurai. And that guy deals four damage. All right. My Berserker is going to attack your um, stockpile. Okay. Your Berserker is a speed what? Slow. Okay. It doesn't matter because you I'm on guard, guard yeah. and I have a man of war. So I'm blocking with the man of war. Okay. So initiative is zero for me. What is your initiative? But my initiative is one. Okay. You, I have to do all my things first. He doesn't have anything. He does four damage to you. Uh, okay. Uh, I am going to, so my guy does four, my guy has units and groups included with any, he's going to get plus one armor. Your guys plus to attack only usable against units at the same speed and slower. Your guys not. Um, so overheat to five. That's not a mad cat. It's an old cat. <laughs> Senior PD. When you block, do you get tapped? I don't know. I think so. Because you get exhausted? Yeah. 
Okay. Blocking with a unit requires your opponent to tap that unit, just as with attacking with a unit. Yes. Okay. So he's attacked. I will deal one to you. Uh, I'm going to use Adam Steiner to untap him. Motherfucker. Uh, and we are going to alpha strike your deck with everybody. And I'm going to um, I guess you can block with I that guy. I can't block. I'm you going to block. Oh, you can't you can't block with that guy or you can block with that guy? I can block. He's a medium. Unless you have something that's faster than a medium, I'm going to be able to block it. Oh, I see. Um, because he's on patrol. Yeah. Which I will do. So, um, uh, uh, let so let's redo it. Uh, do do you want to attack my deck? No. No. There's zero reason to. I guess all my well, that's unfortunate. Uh, I'm just going. Well, you, you can blow him away, huh? Can't you kill him? Yeah, but this is this is oh, pretty that's low. a problem. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, I will pass turn. Okay, let us take down Alex, shall we? House Steiner is on its knees. House Steiner called in actual. Adam Steiner, but it's not going to help. I'm going to put out a support assembly directly by deploying it and then constructing it for zero cost. Okay. Um, oh, and this is untapped. Well, let's uh, let's try to kill Alex this turn. A am I allowed to count your cars? Is that a thing? Yeah, I'm sure you can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we only need to do seven damage to him uh, that, that goes through everything. Um, we can do the long range. We know we have at least three long range, but we're going to need to do more than that. Uh... So we'll just do our, our normal thing that we like to do. Uh, this is our, my first mission, and I'm coming after your stockpile with six uh, long-range damage. Uh, nothing can be done about long-range damage, I don't think, right? Right. Okay. But you are blocking because the rest of the damage would then come into the deck and kill you. Yeah, I have to, I have to block. Okay. Um, so, uh, six minus 13, that's the rest of the damage that I have coming into you. So seven. Yeah. We'll block with these two, which then, oh, what? they deal their damage back to your guys. So, um, how much damage is coming in from each of them? Each of your sources? I guess you, do you determine, you determine where the damage goes. Okay. So you've got a group that's blocking. Yeah. Um, and I've got seven damage that I would like that I need to distribute. Um, so this guy has technically three armor because of ECM on there. Ooh, cool. Uh, ECM is pretty cool. So there, there's he's getting some cool mechs now, but that, it's that one too is late. That one's really cool. The Berserker Revised is, is my big mech. He just came out really late. Yeah. Okay, so, so okay. Well, uh, then I'll do all of it to, if this has three and this has 11, I want to do it to the Berserker Revise. So seven to the Berserker Revise, so you only get three damage. Three damage will go through on him. Okay. 
Um, I have is then I'm going to deal my eight. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got uh, this jump jet guy is giving me plus one initiative. These are my long range. Yeah, I guess because all this all of it from the same source will have to go to the same spot because I can't like do more. And then, because that wouldn't make sense. I guess we'll just kill that guy. Okay. Okay, I've got two mechs left to try to get rid of uh, the... Uh, and and Alex has two sl one slow mech and one medium mech. So I can kill him this turn uh, if I commit both of these one at a time. So we're going to do the hell... Well, I die regardless. There's nothing I can do about not dying. I have to draw two cards in my turn and I die. Mm. Okay, then that is a Jade Falcon victory. Mm -hmm. Sweet. All right, what do you think of the game? I don't like it. Don't like it? Why? No, I don't. I think that the guarding. I think there's a lot of awkwardness in the combat. I love. I mean, this this is a Richard Garfield game, right? I think the mana system totally works. Mm -hmm. I love the theme of BattleTech. I really do love BattleTech, and battle I love tech. Mech Warrior. That's why I like it. Uh, I, uh, the, the flavor stuff, amazing. Mm -hmm. I just think that the the combat is not very good, and then that's what I want to be nailed in a Mech Warrior, a Battle Tech game. Is I really want to feel the combat. I want to feel mechs moving around, and it's more like, oh, my slow mechs can never actually attack a medium mech under any circumstance. Yeah, yeah, um, they can only when that mech is tapped. Oh, yes. So or overheat. Yeah. So I mean, like, there's, there's all. So there's, basically, they have to attack second after yeah. that mech tech. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of awkwardness in the combat. Uh, so I think that it is fun. I'm glad that I played it. I just, I, I don't think this is what be one of the games that we go out and buy like more of the decks. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, maybe some of the other ones are, are cool. Do you want to um, try Ghost Bear, or are you good? No, no, I'm good. Like I said, like the I've. I'm not judging it based on like whether Steiner is good or not. I, mm -hmm. I think it's totally – this game could have totally gone both ways to pay if you hadn't drawn your good guy and I had drawn my good guy. I think that these decks are probably pretty well balanced. Yeah. I just think that there's real awkwardness in the attacking certain bits of combat, not being yeah. able to attack your opponent's resources and, and, and that stuff. So um, I actually agree with you. <laughs> I, I like every aspect of it except for the combat – I like the combat more than you like the combat, though, and I think that's why I like the game. Uh, it is a little uh, finicky. You know, it's fiddly. I am this and that, and then I split here, and then you do this here and that. But it's trying to simulate a miniatures game, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I would rather play the Battletech miniatures game, oh, I think, than, than this. But the card game, I think you can get done quicker than the miniatures game with less setup time. I got to set up terrain. I got to set up rule books i gotta set up unit sheets so that's why i like it because i think it hits that it hits the theme it hits, hits the lore do you um, think this would scratch your the itch that you would have for mech combat because for me it doesn't come close to scratching the itch that's if the I, problem yeah. it's that's why i say I, do, I don't like the combat as much as i was hoping to like the combat um but i does it do, do it enough yeah I mean, this is a based off of one play. I already want to play again. Uh, so I, I like it. But, okay, cool. Well, that's the 90 CCG. Uh, this was 96, 97? Mm-hmm. I, well, I don't, actually, I don't know the exact date. 98. Well, the dates on here say 96 to 98. Well, so. see, this is the second edition. This is Commander's Edition. Here's mm. first edition. So this might have been, you know. Even earlier. Even earlier. This was the heyday for collectible card games. Like there were so many out all at the same time, same companies, and there was it was so much cool stuff going around. So this was ninety six. This first edition was ninety six. Ninety six. So like when Ice Age came out. First game guide. Yeah, they even have a different looking uh, universe. Oh, a different time is that before, different like the time, clan invasion yeah. or whatever it was? Well, there is the clan invasion coming in, but it's the Federated Commonwealth where, what is it, the House Davion and uh, House Steiner came merge, together or yeah. something? Yeah, it's merged through marriage, I think. Cool. I don't remember, so, but someone knows, but. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, that's it, guys. Thank y'all uh, for hanging out with us and watching.
Um, I got to play uh, one of these old 90s CCGs. I am looking to play more with Alex in the future. What's that one? And Joe. So uh, for future streams, I've bought Seven Seas, uh, which is a pirate ships and, and uh, doing battle over the open seas. I got the Sea Dogs, the Corsairs, and the, the, the Gentlemen. Uh, so, and this is also multiplayer, too, so I was hoping to get Joe involved since he loves uh, pirates. So Seven Seas is something that we'll be playing in the future. Okay, guys. See y'all later. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Still early. We get in the second stream. I might stream later on, uh, but um, I'm not sure. I'll have to see. All right, later, Tris.